Congratulations, graduates. You did it. The Bible declares that the ending of a thing is so much better than its beginning. And you finished. You graduated in a season of exhibition. Definition of exhibition is to be put on display. If you can't see what was put on display, then it's you who lack vision. I mean, you graduated in the middle of a pandemic and evil politicians. You survived false prophets and difference of opinion. Now, I know scripture, but I'm ratchet, I remix it. We all know a light shined on Capitol Hill was a light that couldn't be hidden. Now, in addition, I can mark where we drew a line and saw division. Calculate everything subtracted from us and find the difference. I'm no mathematician, but I could not ignore the minus. You see, I calculated the digits, and God is greater than everything we lost with this virus. I mean, I too was blindsided. 
I wanted to tell Satan and COVID to get thee behind us. I mean, yea, though I walk through the valley, I fear no evil because he walks alongside us. So no matter what I'm facing, he walks alongside of me. But honestly, wasn't all of this civil unrest kind of tiring? I mean, I know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what about those who graduated while wrestling with anxiety? I mean, mustard seed of faith was trying to conquer your glaring doubts. You were praying about your fate, asking God about his whereabouts. I mean, the pain that we've endured is not even a fair amount. Wait, I've seen this movie before. Let me walk him y'all to Paramount. See, I memorized the script, and it's based on a true story. You see, the sufferings of this present time does not compare to the glory. Now, I hate to spoil the movie. I'm just giving a warning. You see, we've been endured for a night. But then joy came in the morning. Now, before I make my exodus, let me take you all to the book of Exodus. I figured since y'all were graduating and making y'all exit plan, I would show y'all this exit plan in the Old Testament that I found to be relevant. Y'all remember when Moses told Pharaoh to let my people go? Pharaoh said, no. So then God hardened Pharaoh's heart. There was something he wanted to show. And then God sent plagues. And the first two, it affected the whole nation. But the third plague, this is where we started to see separation. You see, I think I want to give this third plague a definition. A class, let's call this third plague the plague of distinction. Now, if you do not know this story, please get ready to take note. See, God said in Exodus chapter 8, verse 23, and I quote, I want to make a clear distinction between those who belong to me and those who don't. End quote. Translation, there was a shift in the nation. There's going to be a people who was affected by what's going on and another people that won't. See, there's going to be a people who experience ruining and then God's people will experience immunity. You're graduating and I believe that God is calling you into a season of opportunity. I'm talking nourishment and flourishing as we come out of this pandemic. You see, this is the word of the Lord. You just got to choose to stand in it. I lift my hands in it. I got plans with it. You've already been warned. Come with a sword and go there. Get everything that God has for you in the year of our Lord. So fear not, the righteous never got to beg for the bread. This is your season of opportunity. And God said what he said. So congratulations, graduates. You did it. The Bible declares that the ending of a thing, it's so much better than its beginning. Class of 2021, finished. Greetings, family, friends, and our 2021 graduates. Today, we celebrate our 2021 graduates and promotees, our children and youth for the first time in many of their and our lives have been limited and restricted by a pandemic. They could not go out to play, see friends, go to school, nor see many family members. Their graduations and birthdays and church ministries and many other planned events were canceled, reduced, or restricted. As children of color, they've experienced unhinged leadership and the unbridled racism of our nation. Many of their dreams have been dashed, hopes have been, been cut, and fear has been elevated. Yet, we serve a God who can do all things and in whom the impossible exists. There is no limit in Him. He is exponentially great and faithful, and he invites our graduates, our children, to live in the unlimited, to dream big and pursue their goals and move about using their unlimited potential and gifts, to expect unlimited blessings and unlimited assistance from our God, to hold fast to their unlimited potential and abilities and to impact the world and represent an unlimited God who dares them to believe in him and the unlimited possibilities awaiting them. And Jesus said, and looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Let me tell you, go for glory. Go for glory, not of your own self, but glorify God in all that you do, and you will see the impossible. Welcome to East Friendship Live! Woo!
Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, now as humbly as we know how, God. Thanking you for your grace and your mercy, God, that you have shown us daily, Heavenly Father, God. Now, Lord, we pray, God, over our youth, God. We pray your guidance, God, in a fallen world, Heavenly Father, God. In a world, God, that is driven by social media, God, that is driven by vanity, Heavenly Father. God, we, we ask you, Lord, God, that, that you uh, send your Holy Spirit, God, to them, God, to talk to them, God, to keep them grounded, Heavenly Father, God. You said, God, in your word, God, that raise a child in the way that they should go, God, and that when they are older, God, that they will never stray, Heavenly Father, God. We are praying that very same prayer, God, over these youth on today, Heavenly Father, God, from the zero month olds, God, all the way up, God, to the 21-year-olds, Heavenly Father, God. We just praying, God, that, that you cover them, Heavenly Father, God. Dispatch and disperse your angels, Heavenly Father, God, to look after them, Heavenly Father, God. Those that are going to college, Heavenly Father, God, keep them grounded, Heavenly Father, God. Keep them focused, Heavenly Father, on the task at hand, Heavenly Father, God. Help them to grow, Heavenly Father, God, in a healthy way. God, help them to make uh, lifelong connections, Heavenly Father, God, that will lead them to prosperity. Heavenly Father, God, that will lead them to a long-lasting and stable career, Heavenly Father, God, that will make them, God, productive citizens, Heavenly Father, God. But not just in the natural, Heavenly Father, God, we want them to be productive in the kingdom, Heavenly Father, God. Use, allow them to, what the knowledge that they gain, Heavenly Father, God, out there, Heavenly Father, God, that they, that they use those same knowledge and tools, Heavenly Father, God, to advance the kingdom, Heavenly Father, God. Cover them, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, God. And even we praying, Lord, Heavenly Father, God, for the sick and the shut in, Heavenly Father, God. Praying, God, for those, God, who are, who are destitute, Heavenly Father, God, even financial struggles, Heavenly Father, God. We just pray your blessings, Heavenly Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, God. Go over our country, Heavenly Father, God. Make the wrong right, Heavenly Father, God. Help our government, God, to put the right policies in place, Heavenly Father, God. And we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, God, because you are mighty, God. You are amazing, Heavenly Father. You are wonderful, God. You are worthy to be praised, Heavenly Father, God. And we pray this prayer. In your mighty and matchless name, Jesus, amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, let the church say amen. Come on, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Can you believe it? We're worshiping together live. Good morning, East Friendship family, friends, and guests. I'm Zayla, a rising junior at Delaware State University, majoring in nursing. I give a warm welcome to everyone worshiping with us today. It is my pleasure to welcome Pastor Max, Lady Max, families and friends of our 2021 graduating class. I know to the parents it might seem just like yesterday. Your children were preparing for their first years in high school, but here they are now celebrating this great accomplishment. I'm going to be one of those graduating from college soon. And I want to be sure I give back to East Friendship and the WG Scholarship for all that they have poured into me. On the behalf of the youth, I thank the East Friendship Scholarship Ministry for the care, love, and financial support given to the graduates and to our community. Parents, thank you for raising the youth to have a strong foundation in Jesus Christ. This journey would have been impossible without the love, support, patience, encouragement, and yes, discipline from you. We dare to be great and we serve a limitless God. Now, let's get ready to worship and praise God for the great things he has done. Get excited about the word that will be preached by our guest preacher, Omar Burton. For those of you joining on Facebook and YouTube, hit that share button and invite your friends, family, and followers to join you this morning. Send us some hearts, high fives, say something in the chat, repost and share. Our prayer is that you will come to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Now, let's go to church. Praise the Lord, everybody, and let us exalt his name together. 
At East Friendship, we invite you to our community to get to know God, find freedom, and discover your purpose and make a difference. Here are ways you can continue to grow with us in this season and get connected to the East Friendship family. Family and friends, on Sunday, July 4th, help us celebrate our freedom in one of the two ordinances of the Baptist Church, communion. Pick up communion elements Saturday, July 3rd from 12 to 2 p.m. at Annex 1. That is 231 Brook Street Northeast. Let's get ready to break bread together. See you then. Greetings, everybody. I'm Lee Dixon, your roving small groups reporter. And I am Dennis Garland, Jr., your network anchor, and this is WEFBC News. <laughs> <laughs> with the Weekend Update Edition, bringing you the latest news with small groups at East Friendship Baptist Church. Uh, that's right, Dennis. We've got news for the young, news for the old, news for the four and five days old. Wow, that, was, that was a good run. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, hey, Dennis, listen, in honor of the recent Father's Day, I'd I'd like to start us off with a little joke. All right. Uh, when does a joke become a dad joke? Uh, when it becomes apparent. <laughs> oh, wow. Keep your daytime job, Lee. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. I guess you're right, Dennis. <laughs> well, 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 let's get to Small Groups news. Now, this past weekend, we had our Small Groups training day. Yes, Lee, that's where we learned about what it takes to be a good facilitator and leader of a small group. Yeah, what's up next, Dennis? <laughs> well, uh, what we have, Lee, will probably be the most exciting day of the summer small group season. Today is Rally Day! <laughs> so, Lee, what do you know about Rally Day? Well, Dennis, that's the big event when everybody from the church and community get to go online and take a look at the small groups catalog in realm or constant contact and choose the group they want to be a part of. It's a really big deal. Ah, it sounds like a really big deal. <laughs> well, Lee, we have such a variety of groups to choose from. Okay. Uh, groups for our elders, our children, our teens, our men, our women. Groups for fitness, for Bible studies, for sick. I mean, I'm almost running out of fingers here. <laughs> and so much more. Wow, wow, that's fantastic. And, and you know, you're right, Dennis. And once again, our theme for this upcoming uh, 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 summer season uh, 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 is... Hold on, hold on, Lee. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some breaking news here. Um, we're getting word that we're going to have at least two new small groups for this season. Wow, wow, wow. wow. So th they're saying it's going to be the Summer Walkers group and Puzzle Mania. Wow. So that's more choices, means more groups to choose from. This is absolutely fantastic. Hey, Lee, when does the rally start? Well, Dennis, it actually starts at 1 p.m. Wow. today. That's fantastic. Hey, hey, Dennis, is it too late to start a group? Nope, not at all. It's never too late. In fact, if you want to start a group right now, just fill out the application on Realm or on Constant Contact. Wow, wow, folks, and please remember that the upcoming small group season begins on July the 11th and ends on August the 21st. And remember, somebody you know may be going through something, but God will see them through. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Lee Dixon. And I'm Dennis Garland Jr. saying goodbye from EFBC Church News. Bye, so everybody. a time where you can do your part in building your church and Christ's kingdom. Join us in giving via text to give, Giveify, Realm, or Classic Mail, so that our church can continue to make a difference in the lives of our ever-growing community. 
East Friendship is intentional about stewarding our resources and raising up a generation of people who want to touch the heart of God through their giving. Let us now pray and ask God's blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for blessing and keeping our church during this pandemic. We ask that you touch the lives of every giver, every home, and every family. There are those who don't have to give or are unemployed. We ask that you open new opportunities for them. Multiply and increase these gifts that we may do your work in the community and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us continue to worship And right now, you can invite others to join us by clicking share right at the bottom of your screen. Help us spread the good news that God is still speaking and doing miracles around the world and right here at East Friendship. Hey, A.B., can you bring me my bag? I I lost it. I need to hurry up and go. Daddy, where are you going? I want to go. I'm going to a choir rehearsal. Maybe you go next time. I want to go. I can sing every day. It's a spring of light. Okay, so you serious? Yes. Okay, so you want to be in the choir? Yes. I, my, my friends want to be in the choir too, but I want my own choir. Here we go, real loud, yes! Yeah! Jesus loves me! Okay, so you and your friends, if y'all come to rehearsal, uh, hold, hold on. Eddie, can you bring my bag? I'm running late. I'm coming! So, if you and your friends get together and y'all come to rehearsal, then we can put the choir together, okay? Okay. Deal? Yeah. Deal? Okay, right. thank you. All right. Bye, bro. Bye. 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 All right, see y'all. I'll be back. Bye. Bye, guys. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together, y'all.
right, so I am going to call the names of the graduates, and I'll be telling you what high schools they, they're graduating from. And as I call them, they're going to come up to the stage. All right, so we have Reginald Harley, graduated from Bowie High School. We have Aaron Moore, graduated from Banneker High School. Jay Moore, Joy Moore, sorry about that. Brother Joy Moore, graduated from Bowie High School. All right, we have Paige Perkins, graduated from Henry E. Lackey High School. We have Brother Markel Sanders, graduated from McKinley Tech. Brother Cameron Waller, graduated from Bowie High School. We have Brother Donovan Phelps, graduated from Ron Brown High School. Okay, hopefully I didn't miss anybody, did I miss anybody? All right, we have, in their absence, uh, Jace Jenkins and Gia Jenkins. Let's give them a round of applause also. So each of these students, I just want you to know, have unlimited potential. And just know with your support, they can just, I mean, it can, they can go anywhere. So it's very important that we support our young people in all of their endeavors. You know, I think if y'all support me, I can probably jump from that up there. I'm a little afraid of heights. It might not be the best decision, but I can do it if I have y'all support, you know? So let's encourage them to know that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. So some will attend college. Others will go immediately into the workforce. Others have decided to do different programs, and some are still deciding. You know, it's a big decision to make, you know? when you're faced with making a step in a direction that's gonna affect everything that you do and even the people around you. So let's continue to pray for them, you know, as they make this, this journey, you know, into the next step, wherever, whatever direction they're going in. So let's reveal what our graduates are doing next. So graduates, I will count down from five to one. And at that time, you're going to reveal your T-shirts. And then we're going to give them a round of applause. All right. A couple of them, you know, like on Instagram, I just saw this the other day. Um, I'm still learning the social media stuff. You have that invisible ink on Instagram. So a couple of them forgot their caps and gowns. So we just going to pretend they have invisible ink. And then, you know, the reveal. You got that? All right. All right. So five, four. Three, two, one. Yay! Woo! So let's see what we got up here. We have Bowie State University, Ohio State University, Benedict College. We have University District of Columbia, Bowie State University. We have the Year Up program. We have Morgan State University. All right, let's give them a round of applause. All right, as they return to the seats, let's give them another round of applause, all right? Congratulations to you all. Oh, I think we can do better than that. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Bring on the cicadas, bring the cicadas, bring the cicadas. So as you know, a large part of the scholarship ministry um, is to give out scholarships, right? And so, of course, this would not be possible if it were not for those of you who have given over the year and those of you who have, um, you know, reached out and done writing campaigns and asked people to give. So we are going to give out some scholarships today ranging from $1,000 to $1,500.
That's that's a big thing. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now next time I ain't gonna fake. We got that bag of cicadas over there. I need you to stand right behind this row over here. Yeah, when the cicadas come out, the cicadas. All right. So as I call your name, please come up to accept your award. We have uh, Donovan Phelps receiving a thousand dollars. All right, we have Sister Erin Moore. Monroe. Oh, Monroe, I'm sorry. I've been out of college a long time, so sometimes the letters get, you know. Sister Erin Monroe, $1,500. Next, we have Brother Joy Moore. Come on up. Brother Moore is receiving $1,500. Here you go, sir. Congratulations to you. All right. Next, we have Brother Cameron Waller. Come on up. So Brother Waller is going to give us all tickets to the Grammy Awards one day. All right. Next, we have uh, Sister Zelia Claggett. Is she here? Okay. All right, Sister Zelia Claggett. Her mom is coming up to accept on her behalf. She's receiving $1,200. All right, here you go. Congratulations to you. All right. All right, let's give them all a round of applause. And I can't say enough. Please remember to donate, to give, even. Those of you who have received it already, if you have kids that have received it, if you don't have kids that didn't receive it, please still give because we are a community and we're about helping one another. All right? All right. Give them one, uh, one more round of applause. And um, real quick, if you guys have anything you want to say, I'll start down here. Okay. On behalf of my daughter, Zayla, I want to say thank you all for giving her this. I appreciate it. <laughs> It'll buy books. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. I truly appreciate it, and I appreciate the support in my future endeavors. I would really like to thank the church for just continuing to hold me throughout my high school career and now into my college career. Thank you, everybody. All right, let's give them another round of applause. Thank you all. Omar Burton serves as the full-time youth and adult pastor at Grove Church in Portsmouth, Virginia. He will be pursuing his master's degree in divinity this fall at the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union. Pastor Omar has faithfully served as the chaplain for the Norfolk State University football team for the last three years. Additionally, he is a gospel artist under the stage name Focus. As a philanthropist and missionary, he has collaborated with the Renaissance Movement in a successful partnership to fund and build a safe house in Pretoria, South Africa to provide shelter and refuge for abandoned children to protect them from sex trafficking. He travels each year to Nairobi, Kenya for missionary work preaching and performing as focus as a fulfillment to his favorite scripture which is Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. Yeah. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. Yes. 
Come on, can you do me a favor and just stand on your feet? Stand on your feet just for a moment. If y'all can just keep that tune going, if I can just have you to do me a favor, the Bible declares that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe. If you can testify that over these last 18 months that you have found a safe haven in the presence of the Lord, can you do me a favor and just lift the praise into the atmosphere? Come on. If I can just have you engage me for 30 seconds to just begin to give God your best praise come on open up your mouth and just begin to tell the Lord thank you hallelujah God we worship you and we exalt you come on we just finished singing that Lord we trust you with all of our heart if you can testify that you trust the Lord because he has proven to be dependable he continues to make ways out of no way he continues to show up. He continues to provide. He continues to protect. Hallelujah. 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 It is a blessing to be with you all on this afternoon to share in this great celebratory moment. Can we clap our hands and celebrate all of our graduates one more time? We certainly thank God for all of the accomplishments. Listen, you may be seated, you may be seated, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I am excited to share with you all um, on this afternoon what the Lord has placed on my heart. Uh, I'm going to speak to unlimited potential on today. So for those of you who have your Bible app, for those of you who were tuned in to the live stream, I want you to do me a favor and turn with me to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, and I'm going to read for you verses 11 through 16, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Here is how the word of the Lord reads, then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Ebezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have. Look at the person beside you and said, go with the strength you have. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Verse 15, listen to how Gideon responds. But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Verse 16, the Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. I want to preach to you for the next few moments unlimited potential. If you could do me a favor and just repeat this after me, I have unlimited potential father release an anointing that would make preaching easy release a grace that would persuade hearts and perfect habits it is in Jesus name we pray let me hear you as loud as you can shout amen uh, friendship I want to share something with you recently I saw a video of a bear that was raised in the zoo that was now living in the wild. And in the video, I observed the bear walking in this self-made parameter. And in this video, I saw a bear walking within a self-made parameter that he created for himself. Even though there was no physical cage, I observed that this bear was still caged within his mind. 
Uh, when you think about a bear, a bear has giftedness, a bear has agility, a bear has a strength, a bear has ability, but based upon years and years of living in confinement, even though he was in a new arena, he was not able to express his new opportunity. He had become so conditioned to being confined that even though he was in an environment that was conducive for freedom, he was still a prisoner of the experiences of his past. So instead of exploring the potential of his present, he was relegated to his experience with confinement. I would like to like I would like to let you know that confinement was so deeply rooted into his psyche that he did not know how to operate beyond the limitation that he had been exposed to. Ladies and gentlemen, I share this story with you all because I see similarities between what I saw on TV when I watched this bear who was now in a space to where he had all of the freedom in the world, but he could not get beyond the experiences of his past. If you look at Judges chapter 6, uh, Gideon is unable to see himself beyond what he has been. The tone that Gideon in indicates is that he believes that what he has always been is going to be what he will always be. I would like to let you know, church, that perception is the representation of what I perceive. Watch this. Because of Gideon's experiences, he has a perception about himself that is represented by his facts. Because of what I currently am now, he believes that that is a reflection of what he will always be. So this leaves Gideon with a distorted view of his future because he is so relegated to what he has been in his past. My question to you this afternoon is, are you going to allow the facts about your life dictate what God is speaking concerning your future? You see, my behavioral objective this afternoon is to get you to see yourself beyond, beyond your own reality. Watch this. Your reality is a sum of your experiences that dictate how things appear to you. But I want to let you know that your experiences have to be brought under subjection when you are trying to prepare yourself to embrace new expectations. Uh, sometimes in your life, you will have experiences that you will encounter, but you cannot allow your experiences dictate what your expectation is going to be in the future. I would like to let you know that you have to arrive at a place in your life to where you start to accept that God's divine truth concerning you is greater than your facts. Can I let you know something? Uh, when God declares his truth concerning your life, I have discovered that truth does not change, but facts will change. Can I unpack that for you? The reality of the situation is you can experience a time in your life to where you are dealing. I've used myself for an example. Last year, I was extremely overweight. I allowed myself to put on a few quarantine pounds. Go ahead and testify if when you got locked up in the house, you was in the cubby every day, you was eating up all kind of snacks, trying to get your hands on all type of ice cream and cakes, and I found myself extremely overweight. Then I got to a position to where my weight started to change. The fact is, I was at a certain weight at one point, but that fact can change. Here's what I have discovered about truth. Truth does not change because truth is absolute. Are y'all following me? Watch this. When it concerns truth, you cannot add to truth. You cannot take away from truth. What I have discovered is that many people have a hard time accepting what God declares concerning your life because you live in the tension of wrestling with what your facts have been. Y'all don't worry about it. Y'all focus right here. We're going to keep on moving. So the reality of this moment is that I am identifying a man in this story who has many facts concerning his past, and I have discovered that God does not need to uh, rectify the facts concerning your past in order to speak into your future. I have oftentimes discovered that people have a very difficult time believing what God has declared concerning who he is calling them to be because they have allowed themselves to become a prisoner to the moments that have taken place in their past. 
Here it is, a youth pastor in Portsmouth, Virginia, and oftentimes I find myself operating in some of the spiritual gifts that God has allowed me to operate with. And anytime I declare the word of the Lord concerning where they are going, oftentimes their first response is, I can't do what you're saying I can do because I'm still a prisoner of the facts of my past. I believe that God wants to call you into a place where he starts to get you to explore your potential. Somebody shout potential. The reality is potential speaks to a world of possibility. Your potential does not speak to what you have been, but your potential speaks to what it is that you can become. Here it is. I find it very interesting that Gideon finds himself in a space in his life to where he is dealing with all of the facts concerning his past. If you look at Judges chapter 6, the Bible declares around verse 1 that Gideon found himself hiding from the Midianites because the Bible declares that Gideon and his tribe that had did evil in the sight of the Lord and they had become subject to the Midianites. Watch this. Gideon had a difficult time discovering what his gifts and his talents were because Gideon had arrived at a place to where he was afraid to confront what was in front of him because of what he had allowed himself to be subjected to. I want to suggest to you that if you are going to get to a place where you start to explore your potential, you've got to be comfortable confronting the obstacles that are in front of you. I want to submit this principle for you. I believe that if you are going to live a successful life as a believer, you have to become comfortable with healthy confrontation. Somebody shout confrontation. Uh, the reality is I do not believe that God has called us to a life to be living as victims, but God has called us to a space to where he wants us to live as victors. I oftentimes hear in church uh, the scripture quoted that you are more than a conqueror. Can I help you on this afternoon? In order for you to be more than a conqueror, you've got to get to a place where you are comfortable with conquering. Uh, a lot of people do not like the word confrontation because it has a negative connotation to it. But the reality is we get the word confront from the word confrontation. And to confront means to deal with what is unpleasant head on. If we would be honest with ourselves on today, many of us have some unpleasant facts concerning our past. Okay, I thought I was talking to somebody. Many of us have some unpleasant experiences that we have lived through. Many of us have some unpleasant vices. We've got some unpleasant characteristics. We've got some unpleasant traits. But in order for you to get to the place that God is calling you to, you've got to be comfortable confronting the things about yourself that you don't like. So here it is. We find ourselves in the scripture, and this is my favorite part. The Bible declares that an angel of the Lord appears to Gideon while he is hiding under a tree. Gideon is hiding under a tree because for years he has found himself susceptible to the tricks of the enemy. For years, Gideon has found himself susceptible to what his enemies have been doing to him. And Gideon finds himself dealing with the reality of his own failure. The Lord appears in a situation where Gideon finds himself wrestling with the facts concerning his past. But isn't it interesting that the Bible declares that an angel of the Lord showed up and appeared to Gideon while he was hiding under a tree? Let me unpack this for you. The Lord always desires to show up in the hidden spaces of your life. Thanks be unto God that there were some moments in my life where I was left dealing with my own voids. I was left dealing with my own grief. I was left dealing with processing the things that had taken place in my life. But it is always the desire of the Lord to show up in an area of your life and help you deal with what has been in the past and said, now that I have arrived, I've come to give you victory. I feel like preaching this point right here. It is in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 where the Bible declares that the earth was formless and it was without void. And the Bible declares that the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the earth that was was formless and it was dark and it had void. May I suggest to you that it's always been the will of God to allow his spirit to hover over the areas in your life that was dark and void. I thought I was going to get a few more amens. It has always been the desire of the Lord to see those empty places, to see those dark places, to see those spaces that are ugly, to see those spaces that don't make you feel good, to see those spaces that you try to hide and can 
conceal from everybody else. The spaces that you won't put on social media. The spaces that you won't talk to your friends about. The spaces that you only talk to your counselor about. And the Lord is saying that ever since I created the earth, it has always been my will to send my spirit to hover over the places that was dark and empty and to produce out of your emptiness. The Bible declares in the book of Genesis that when the spirit of the Lord hovered over what was dark, what was empty, it was void. After the spirit hovered, then God said, let there be. What God did was he said, where there was nothing, where there was darkness, where there was void, once I place my spirit over that area, I can start to produce from the area that was not producing. May I suggest to you that some of the things that you have gone through in your life and you've been wondering, God, where are you? He was saying, I was just waiting for you to get empty so I can hover. I was waiting to pull some things out so I can hover. And then I can take everything out that has been there. I can take out everything that has been dormant and I can start to produce from your emptiness. So the Bible declares that an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon while he was hiding. I find it interesting that the Bible doesn't say that it was the Lord who showed up, but it was an angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord who showed up, showed up and began to call Gideon out of a place of being a victim and out of a place of vulnerability and started to speak to what he can become. The Lord will always show up in the isolated areas in your life and say, I want you to recognize that you are no longer alone. Look at the person beside you and say, you're not alone. It is the desire of the Lord to show up in the spaces where you're isolated and say, you have been trying to do this thing on your own, but watch this. Now I want to come alongside of you. There are many of us in here who have experienced brokenness apart from Christ. There are many of us who have experienced bitterness apart from the Lord. There are many of us who have experienced failure apart from God. But what God does is says, okay, now that I have allowed you to experience what life would look like apart from me, now I want to come alongside of you so I can start to produce new results in your life. So what has been will not always be because I want to speak to and push you into the place where I show you what it is that you can become. So an angel of the Lord shows up and he shows up and he begins to speak to Gideon concerning his future. And you know what Gideon does? Gideon begins to respond in the same manner that many of us do. The angel of the Lord tells Gideon what he can become and Gideon responds by saying what he's always been. If you read the text in Judges chapter 6, verses 11 through 16, when this dialogue begins to take place, listen to the tone and what Gideon says. I'm the least in my family. My family has the weakest tribe, and I'm the least of them. Isn't it interesting that when God is telling you what you can become, we always respond with what it is that we've always been. So Gideon starts to have this conversation and say, no, Lord, you, you can't be talking about me. And I want to let you know something. Gideon does something that I want to make sure that you don't do. If you don't get anything else from this message, please get, get this. Please stop rehearsing the facts about your past when God is trying to speak to the fulfillment in your future. Gideon begins to rehearse his failure before the Lord. Well, Gideon begins to rehearse his brokenness before the Lord. Gideon begins to rehearse what he has heard other people say about him. Can I let you know something? You do not need the confirmation from people to affirm what God spoke to you in private. I need for some of you who are listening right now to come out of agreement with being subjected to what other people have to say about you. Even if I have to go forward alone with what God said, what God spoke to me in private ought to produce enough zeal and peace to say, I don't need the affirmation from people to affirm what God has already stamped. So Gideon begins to rehearse his facts. And here is what blows my mind about this conversation. The angel of the Lord never disputes what Gideon says about his past. The angel of the Lord never tells Gideon that he is wrong. The angel of the Lord never tells Gideon that his past is invalid. 
But what the angel of the Lord does do is say, I'm not here to rectify what has been. I'm here to push you into what you're getting ready to become. May I suggest to you that the Lord does not need to check with your past in order to give you insight and intel concerning your future. So what ends up happening is Gideon has to arrive at a place to where he stops recycling and stops rehearsing the facts about what he has been and what he has not yet accomplished in order for him to embrace where it is that the Lord is calling him to. I find it very interesting that in this dialogue that is taking place between Gideon and the Lord, that Gideon continues to remind God of the mistakes that he's made. And God has to clarify his potential. Somebody shout, clarify my potential. The reason why sometimes your potential has to be clarified is because many of us have a distorted view about our future because of the perspective that we utilize of our past. Your perspective is represented sometimes by facts. Your reality is a sum of your experiences that dictate how life appears to you. But if you are going to live a life with unlimited potential, you have to literally bring your experiences, you have to bring your past, and you have to bring it under subjection to God's expectation to your future. God is the one who declared your ending from the beginning. It is in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 139, where David begins to prophesy and say that the Lord had saw all of your days laid out before him before you were even formed in your mother's womb. It is David who begins to say that God's thoughts concerning you are more than the very numbers of grains of sand that exist. I want to let you know that when God said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Can I help you? He wasn't just talking about your giftedness. He wasn't just talking about your ability. He wasn't just talking about your assignments. But when God said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Essentially what he is saying also, I knew all about your failures. I knew the neighborhood you were going to live in. I knew the school that you were going to go to. I knew all of the setbacks that you would ever have. Talk back to me. I knew about all of the disappointments that you would ever encounter. I knew about all of the brokenness that you would have to go through. And even though I knew all about it, I took a calculated risk. I made a calculated decision. I calculated everything about you that was good and bad. And I steered and I still declared what you were going to become. Stand on your feet all across the field. Unlimited potential. God is not checking with your past to declare what you were going to become. But potential exists in the realm of possibility. I love this story about Gideon because I just knew that in this exchange between Gideon and the Lord, that the angel of the Lord was going to dispute the claims that Gideon was making. When you get the opportunity, go back and read Judges chapter 6, and nowhere in this entire exchange does the angel of the Lord say, you're wrong concerning what has happened. He says, I'm not concerned about what has been. I'm not concerned about the times in your life that you were the least. I'm not concerned about the times in your life where you thought you were the weakest. But let me speak to your potential. The angel of the Lord tells Gideon to go forward and fight, and he is going to have victory as if he were fighting against one man. I want to leave this with you. It's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 29. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. To those who have no strength, he increases might. My favorite part of the story uh, between the exchange between the angel of the Lord and Gideon, the angel of the Lord looks at Gideon and says, go with the strength that you have. Look at somebody beside you and say, you're more than what you think. Now, this is my, this is my, my theologian part of me coming out. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, the Bible declares, those who have no strength, he increases might. And in in Judges chapter 6, verse 15, he tells Gideon, go with the strength that you have. 
which means that there was an ability that Gideon had all along that he just never tapped into. May I suggest to you that there is something that is on the inside of you. And if you just allowed yourself to tap into what God has already placed on the inside, you would find yourself that you are stronger than what you think. I've got one illustration for you, and then we're getting ready to pray. I, I once saw this dog who was tied to a chain in the tree of his backyard. For years, the dog would always remain chained up to this tree. And one day, a neighbor was walking with his dog, and he was throwing a tennis ball to his dog for his dog to go fetch. And one day, this neighbor took his tennis ball, and he threw it a little too far, and it landed in the backyard with the dog who was chained and tied up to the tree. The dog who was chained and tied up to the tree lunged towards the tennis ball. But when he reached the end of his leash, he recognized that he wasn't in enough proximity to get to the tennis ball. The dog lunged, lunged, and lunged, and then he broke free from the chain. Now, I don't believe that in this moment, the dog developed more strength. What I do believe is that there was something that was placed in front of him that he desired so much that he tapped into a strength that was dormant. He tapped into a strength that he already had, and he started to explore his own potential. He started to explore his own possibility. And the more that he exerted his energy, the more that he exhausted what was already on the inside of him, because something was placed in front of him that he desired, he tapped into a strength that he already had. May I encourage you on this afternoon? Our prayer in this season is not, God, give me more strength. But my prayer in this season, God, place something in front of me that I desire so much that I tap into what you've already placed on the inside of me. So lift your hands all across the area. And I want you to close your eyes as we begin to pray. Because I believe that there are those of you who are represented here live and those of you represented on the live stream who don't realize the strength that you already have. I love the Lord and I love his word because the Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly and abundant more than we can ever think or ask for. But then it gives this disclaimer, but it's according to the power that works on the inside. God has already placed power on the inside of you. And if you were ever to get into a space to where you moved forward with confidence, you would be able to understand your own capability. For some of you, you think that you lack capability. No, no, no. You don't lack capability. You just lack confidence. If you can ever get your confidence to align with your capability, you would blow your mind. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every individual who has not tapped into their own potential. I pray that each and every individual under the sound of my voice who has lived in confinement, who has lived within self-made parameters and boundaries around their own giftedness and around their own ability and around their own anointing. God, I pray that you would begin to remove the veil from their eyes. God, I pray that you would begin to provide clarity where there has been confusion, provide clarity where there has been ambiguity, and begin to help them to see themselves the way that you envision them when you created them in your own image and then looked at them and declared it is good. When God created you, he looked at you and he declared it is good. So Father, in the name of Jesus, help them to see the goodness within themselves that you placed in them before you, for, uh, before you founded up the foundations of this world. God, help us to have a Gideon experience to where we receive revelation that we can move forward with the strength that we already have. Help 
us to have complete understanding that we are more than what we have thought of ourselves, but help us to truly live from this day forward with a mindset, with a mentality, with a perspective, with a determination that I am unlimited, that because I was made in the image of God, my God has no limitation, my God has no confinement, and because God placed his spirit on the inside of me, I've got access to resources that are unlimited. I've got access to peace that is unlimited. I have access to joy that is unlimited. I've got access to ability that is unlimited. So Father, help us to come into agreement with what your word says concerning our lives and let us be better for it as we apply these principles to our everyday walk. And our job, help us to think I'm unlimited. When it comes to opportunity that we talked ourselves out of applying for, let us go back again and say, no, I'm unlimited. When it comes to our relationships, let us believe we are unlimited. And our strategic planning and our budget proposals help us to believe that we are unlimited. As they, as our youth consider their future, whether it's the school they're going to go to, the classes they're going to take, the scholarships that they are going to apply for, help them to apply and think to themselves, because I've got God, I've got unlimited potential and unlimited possibility. God, this is our prayer. In Jesus' precious name, let all the saints say amen, amen, and amen. Yes, service was hot, and I can't wait till we worship in person again. Yes, we worship, and we sang, we prayed, and we celebrated our graduates. Thank you again, each friendship, family, and friends, and guests for joining us today. And you can join us again at 3 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook for a replay. We hope that you felt God's love and presence. And remember, we hope you to come to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Stay connected with, with our Between Friends newsletter. Make sure you open it. And also through Realm and social media. Stay home, stay safe, be blessed and see you next Sunday.